Right, let's begin. I've got some side tonight. Yeah, I don't know why that was so loud. I heard it. My headphones were off and I could hear it from across the room. So I turned it down slightly. I'm not sure why it was so loud. Um, yeah, I have no idea. Uh, thanks for the host, Andy Magic Knight. Thank you for the follow, Bodicker Games. And thanks for the resub, Warlock. All right. Let's say hello to everybody. Say hello to everybody, add points, start the races, and then crack on with this. <laughs> uh, who we got here then? Hey, cheers, Wicked. Andy Magic Knight, thank you for the resub, Andy. Uh, Mr. G Steps. Uh, Eldritch, Quadrasol, uh, Bodica Games as well. Welcome. Um, Fit Trend, Amok 64, Mutated Donkey. I like that name, that's good. Um, uh, Mr. G, I think I've already said, Quick Tech Kev, uh, Warlock, I think that's no, True Tonnies, Vos TR. Uh, I will catch up with whoever that was that, that subbed. Amok, thank you for the resub, Amok. 16 months, wow. Uh, da, da, da. Promo Sundrift, Microman 3526, and thank you for the, thank you for the bits, Microman. Uh, Monsters Go Boom, welcome. Uh, I think that's everybody now. Oh my God, you guys are subbing like crazy. Hype Train's on. Uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, it's Amok, Amok and his gift subs. Amok, you're crazy, man. You're a crazy, crazy man. Uh, sorry, let me just... One second... Um, thank you very much for the gift subs, Amok. Uh, gift subs to Vostiar, uh, Carl Henrik, uh, Belginal, uh, or Belginal, uh, Werewolf Deb, Chromos Undrift. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Um, <laughs> off goes the hype train. Oh, I caught my back on a door handle. This is what came into the room, and that's really sore. Thank you for the uh, bits as well. Monsters go boom, and steps as well. Oh my god, you're all at it now. This is your second time on Twitch, and you have absolutely no idea what's going on. What's going on? It's um, We have a hype train, uh, which is when uh, people sub um, or donate bits in quick succession. Twitch gives you all a chance to kind of uh, join in and, and earn some emotes. So that's why it's going a little bit bit crazy. Uh, we'll start the coding in a minute. Uh, thank you for the bits as well, Click Tech Kev. Appreciated. Uh, yeah, scam train. Uh, <laughs> You put this on, uh, Anti Magic Knight. You're all sneaking the Christmas tunes in without me noticing. Okay, let me add some points. Let me start the quiz, uh, and then we'll crack on with the uh, code. So tonight is Checkanoid. Uh, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Go on, Amok. You're crazy. Um, thank you for the bits, Amok. Uh, that's the wine paid for this weekend. <laughs> Cheers. I've got two bottles of wine this weekend. Just a reminder as well, we're giving away giving away this uh, Spectrum uh, at the weekend uh, with uh, Pi Zero uh, mod inside. So 
along with along with a, a, a USB SNES pad and the, the all the leads you need plus a, a, an SD card full of stuff in there as well. So we'll be giving that away this weekend uh, to uh, one lucky winner. Uh, you'll be able to buy tickets for two and a half thousand uh, points, uh, channel points. Uh, so make sure you save some of them for the weekend. Um, and then there'll just be one more giveaway before the end of the year. So we'll do a Christmas giveaway, which will probably be a little bit bigger, um, depending on depending on what what I can kind of find. I'm I'm thinking of um, thinking of giving away uh, two prizes uh, for Christmas. Um, so there'll be two winners over Christmas. I'm not sure, or maybe I'll just do uh, maybe I'll do a load of games and 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 do multiple winners or something. I don't know. Um, I, I'll have a think about that. Okay, right. I'm going to start the races. There we go. I'm racing the quiz. Um, let's get cracking with this. So, um, uh, so this is we're doing Checkanoid. Um, on the last stream, I believe we were just in the process of adding bonus uh, power ups in. Uh, why did that not load? What happened? Oh, did I? Okay. Okay, so I believe we'd made it spawn. Oh yeah, that's right. We just put one on the screen. It didn't. It's not spawning from a box yet. Ah, that's right because we need to make it move towards the player, which is what this is for. Move, move to player. Okay, in that case, that's what we're we're going to do now. We're going to move this towards the player. Um. Okay, should be fairly easy. Uh <laughs> just place the order for your Amiga, could have built shot. Well what if you what if you ordered on the Amiga then, Cheers Wicked? This PC is getting crazier and crazier by the by the day. It's, it's got uh it's now got an Xbox in it as well. So I've got an Xbox and a PS4 in it. Um as well as the thirty ninety and I've just put a new Raspberry Pi image on it as well, so Everything <laughs> you've just bought everything that's that's kind of good. Hang on, my son's talking. Hang on. There we go. I'm sure it'll probably appear on the stream in a minute. Um, okay, cool. So what we want to do is we want to move it towards the player. So first of all, let's just make sure this is being called. I'm pretty sure it is being called, but I'm just going to put a breakpoint in there because it's the quickest way of testing if I've actually uh, hooked that routine up. Which I have not. Okay, cool. Uh uh, we've got an update here. Oh. Oh, interesting. That should be being being called. Okay. Do a break point there. I just want to check uh what might be going on here. Uh What's that noise? I've got a weird notification noise. Uh, I have no idea what that was. Mm. Yeah, no idea. I'm sure I'll find out at some point. Oh, hype train ended. Okay, that must be it then, yeah. Cool. Okay, right, so uh, I don't know why that's not loading in. It should be loading in. 
I, re I should really turn HDR off on my monitor while I'm developing this. This is flickering a bit, so that's fine. I'll, I'll deal with it for now. I might turn it off during the break. I'm a bit scared of turning things off and breaking the stream though, so maybe I'll leave it. Just deal with it for now. Um, this is not moving towards the player at all, is it? That That is not being called. Is it going to flash and go off? Okay. Are we actually calling update power ups? Let's have a look at the game move. Power ups update power ups is that okay? So this is definitely being called. Uh, the type is zero. It jumps to skip. Oh, maybe the type is zero. And power up type load y with type okay let me find that screen code this one i think yeah okay so we've got a type of one which means it should be coming in to here and doing this piece of code here uh wait are breakpoints even working maybe breakpoints aren't working It wouldn't surprise me. I've I've had this problem a few times with this. What the hell? This what? Okay, let's do some border switching. I'm concerned now that the breakpoint's not working, so I just want to make sure that's the case. I don't see any reason why that power should not be being moved across the screen, but for some reason it's not being uh, not moved across the screen. Uh, updated. This update is not triggering at all for some reason. Let's put this in here. Maybe it's to do with this frame timer. Maybe it's something weird's going on with the frame timer. Okay, so we're definitely getting an update. So this is being hit. Um, I'll stall the frame timer there. So what I would hope to see here is it flash between black and white. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's the frame time is always one for some reason. I oh, know it's flashing between black and white. Okay, so this should be fine, uh, but it's getting to here. Let's put that in here. Damn it, it really like just scratched my back with a door handle and now it feels really sore. <sighs> Typical. Okay, so it's only ever doing zero here, so it's like the data type is is wrong. Uh, so this this is wrong for some reason. Okay, so type is here. Uh, when we add it, okay, let's put a breakpoint in here. Just to make sure that that value is correct and being stored. God damn it, this is this. Not a good start, not a good start. How's everybody's week been so far then? Everyone having a, having a good week? Okay, that's fine. 
I've been um, as well as kind of what clearly my my graphics card at the weekend putting the Xbox in in the case today. Uh, I'm I'm planning on over on the right hand side of my monitor. Um, I've got a shelf unit at the moment, which is just got at the moment it's just got a bit of junk in it. There's like some uh, some disc games and um, my Game Boy Advance games are in some boxes in there. So I'm going to clear that out. I'm going to add two more shelf panels to it, and I'm going to put my uh, consoles in there as well. So I'll have the Game Boy in there. Um, I'll probably have the the uh, the ZX the you know XL in there as well. Um, the Atari will go in there when I when I get that the Atari uh, VCS, the new one. The Jaguar will go in there as well, and the Famicom will go in there as well. And then I'm going to put some RGB lights in it as well, so it lights up nice. And then that'll give me a nice area over here um, with with console with kind of retro consoles in it as well. Promise uh, some Jeff. Oh, let's catch up. My week has been amazingly good. Oh, cool. Why has your week been amazingly good, if you want to share? Uh, great defender. Excellent. Just had a holiday. Oh, very nice. Uh, did you manage to get to go anywhere, or was it just a kind of uh, stay-at-home, staycation sort of thing? <laughs> good. Been trying to been trying to get um, off my fat bum and do exercise on Beat Saber. That's the only reason I'm tempted to get a VR headset again is uh, because of the exercise thing. Uh, Warlock, we've been really good. Uh, did a podcast last night. Oh, God damn it. I forgot to. I, I was in a meeting this morning. I saw you advertise it uh, this morning. I meant to join, but I ended up in a meeting, so I didn't get a chance. Uh, where is the ST going? Uh, it's wedging the door shut. Uh, my daughter wanted a Steam account to be made, a family one, so she can play all the VR games like Beat Saber in her room. That's good. Channel 50 k is your Mega 65 on the way? I, 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 as far as I can tell, no, not yet. But um, um, who said, uh, Paul said that they are starting to, uh, probably going to start shipping the units out towards the end of the week. So um, I'm hoping by tomorrow uh, my, my order states will have changed. Uh, yeah, playing the box in the tower came <laughs> staycation yeah good 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 man keep that keep that um social distance from everybody in the lockdown don't know if the space of vr where the pc lives yeah i don't really have space in here for vr but uh in the other room there's a lot of space um i could definitely set something up in there but then i'd want my main machine to be the vr machine that's the, that's what it's for Got a little, little intro loader for some mini games for C64. Fan is a little game. Oh, little intro loader for some mini games. For C64. Oh, okay. There's always the ring thing for the Switch if VR is too much. Yeah, that's a good point actually. Um, I do have. So I have two switches. I have. I have the. Uh, I have this one. With the. Uh, with the detachable. Uh, things and I also have the. Uh, uh, the Switch Lite as well, which is I actually use the Switch Lite more than that one, to be honest. That one now is I've hacked that one now, so it runs uh, it runs any software I want on it. Whereas uh, I keep the light for the kind of visual software. Uh... Okay, cool. Right, let's crack on. Sorry, I just wanted to I wanted to catch up with what you guys were doing. Okay, so let's have a look. So this is working, but this doesn't seem to be working. Um, so let's have a look. So we, we put a breakpoint up here, and this was being set correctly. Uh, so now I'm going to put a breakpoint in here, uh, and I'm going to check these values as they come through. So what I'm checking is uh, for the x value, uh, so hopefully this should count down to zero. Um, and should only skip over this once it reaches zero. Uh, and then we also need to check the data types that it's pulling out. It should be pulling out this types from here. And that's being set here correctly. So um, either something is clearing this at the wrong time, which is what I suspect. I suspect this reset is happening too soon. Um, 
in which case we probably need to move move this to somewhere else. Um, uh, power up. Yeah, probably might need to move this to somewhere else. Let's just see what happens when I run this. I think I remember something about this now. Yeah, the the order that things are initialized for a screen uh, means that that data may get reset. I think I think if I remember rightly, it's because. It's the first time I come in the screen, that's why. Yes, I remember now. Two, one, zero. Yes. Okay, I remember exactly the problem here. So on the initial load of the screen, so I don't need any of this really. This is gonna work. It's gonna keep the breakpoint in here. So on the initial load of the screen, um the this gets run way before um anything gets reset, and then stuff gets reset. Uh, but on on uh, uh, subsequent loads to the to the screen, uh, it should work in the correct order, so it won't be a problem. Now, it shouldn't be a problem anyway because you're never going to load into uh, into the the first screen you load into is not just going to have bonuses in it. Um, so, so I think if I leave this screen and come back in, I should hit a breakpoint. Uh, there we go, which is correct. Okay, so the move to player. Okay, so the move to player is working correctly. Okay, so move to player. So X is our index. And what is Y here? Y is our sprite index. Okay, so let's make a note of that. Oh, actually, it says here that it's not. Oh, this is what we need to calculate. Okay. Okay, let's 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 put what we start with. So start with uh x register equals um this is our power up index. So this is the index uh into our our list of power ups that are being uh actioned every frame. And our y register is our uh power up sprite index. Power up, uh, multiplex sprite index. So this uh, this value here is which sprite we're we're working on. Um, so what we need to do is we need to uh, calculate first of all uh, uh, calculate the uh, distance. So we need to know. Uh, well, it's not even calculate. Really well, we need to check is power up within range. Let's let's write out exactly what we need to do. So check if power up is, is within range. If it is within range, let's put exit here. If it is within range, we go here. Uh, otherwise, exit. If it is within range, then what do we need to do? We need to work out um, work out the x and y. Uh, Actually, we can do this beforehand because then we can use this to check the, the range as well. So we need to work out um, the x and y uh, distance. Oh, God, my back. Work out, work out the x and y distance to the player. move toward player okay so this is this is exactly what we need to do right now so next step let's let's look at what we've got so uh player information is stored in here now this player information is not half x and half y um i would suggest that we need to do this in character space um Actually, maybe not. But in terms of working out the range, we'll do it in character space. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to we're going to check um, player X. No, let's do yeah. Let's do player X. Okay, so 
So x is uh, player x minus power up x. Okay, I don't know why I've got that down there, but we'll, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, and y will be player y minus power up y. So this is, this is the uh, check that we're going to do here. I'm actually going to remove the y register here because we've already got the sprite index here, so we don't need to grab that again. So it's fine to bash the y register. So we'll leave the x register alone because that's going to give us these values here. Um, a bit of air wolf. Uh, getting fit is the only thing stopping work just finishing me up do you know what since working from home and what it's been what are we on now this is month eight or something like that um since working from home i i've i put quite a bit of weight on which i'm i'm not happy about uh so i probably do need something like that uh to get into fortunately coding doesn't uh doesn't help me lose weight i need to do it i definitely need to do it at some point okay so power up x and y now is half pause okay so x is in half positions which is fine okay so so let's do do this here um, so divided by two. And let's do the whole of that divided by two, right? And this, this will give us, uh, some units, some values, which are, are the same and will allow us to, um, uh, make some comparisons. yeah the problem is i i don't go out at the moment at all i refuse to go out the the unfortunately the streets are full of idiots that don't practice any kind of social distance on squaring so um and i'm paranoid as hell about it so i and this is why this is why i've got a i've got a problem at the moment uh because previously i would be walking every single day uh so i'm i'm kind of uh it, it screwed me over a little bit Okay, so what am I going to do? So I'm going to grab um, this value from player. Uh, player x plus two. The reason I'm grabbing plus two is this is the MSB here. So I'm going to grab the MSB uh, and I'm going to shift that to the right. <laughs> and that's going to set the carry flag. Uh, based on whether or not that value was set or not. Uh, so that means we can then uh, take this value, uh, the, the LSB, uh, and we can roll that to the right. And what that will do is it will it will basically give us, in, um, in the accumulator, we will have a value which is half of the player x value, half of the 9-bit player x value, but now it will be an 8-bit value. So we can use that uh we can store that somewhere um i'm gonna open up zero page let's have a look what, what would we like for zero page at the moment uh that's just looking pretty good uh, we've got some temporary storage space here i'm going to create some um some specific ones here Uh, power up, I'm going to call it move x and move y. I'm trying as hard as I can to um, to use these values um, uh, uh, to to uh, to use uh, unique zero page uh, locations so that they don't conflict. Uh, Good night, Budget Games. Uh, thanks for joining the stream. 
still see so many non mask users or wrong mask users, yeah. Uh, I got all my groceries delivered now, yeah, me too. Yeah, Mr. Speaker's right as well. I think that is a, that is a big problem. It's not so much the exercise, um, although the exercise kind of helps stave it off a little bit. Um, the problem is, is now you're at home all the time, um, and the boredom sets in. You you don't you know. I'm not going out and walking around and kind of keeping my mind occupied. I'm I'm getting bored and fidgety, and I tend to I tend to over snack when I shouldn't be. Um, so I think I think you're right there, Mr. Speaker. I think that is the the biggest biggest problem. Um, I feel like I tried keto. Keto did really really well for me. I I lost a lot on keto. Um, I think I lost about. I, I must have lost about twenty kilos or so. Um, you also overbuy tech shit. Yeah, I do buy a lot of tech. I like tech. What can I say? I I didn't have all this growing up, you know. I I had I never got any of this stuff. So now I'm now I'm treating myself. Well, yeah, keto did really well for me. It's just impossible to keep up. The moment you stop as well, you just put the weight back on like that instantly. So um, you either have to be all in uh, and keep it up, and it's very hard to keep up um, because one slip and you you're out of ketosis and you you. Um, uh, the problem is underusing the overbuying. I've been using, I've been trying to use more of it um, at the moment recently. Um, uh, following the Pendulette diet. Okay. I've been watching a lot of his uh, videos at the moment. So, but yeah, the the problem is underusing, not not overbuying. But I am getting slightly better at. It. I'm trying to. Uh, this is why I'm trying to set this area up a little bit better. So if I want to play on the, for instance, the GameCube, I can just flick this on here, press a button on here, and have it on my screen in in a few minutes, um, in a few seconds even, rather than having to mess around finding wires and stuff. I just want everything uh, plugged in, switched in through all the all the kind of switch and circuitry and stuff, and uh, have it have it set up really quickly. Okay, so we're going to store that value here. Actually, probably don't need to store it yet. So I'm just going to keep it out. I'm going to set the carry flag here, uh, and I'm going to subtract this half position X. Uh, and that is going to be data half position X, comma X. So that's going to give us our, um, oh, what's it done that? That's going to give us the uh, distance, that half of the distance in pixels um, between the player and the power up, which I am then going to store in power up move X. So this now contains uh, distance X divided by two. Okay, and now let's do the same for, well, actually, we can already do a test here. So we, we want to kind of skip out of this as quickly as possible. So if that value is already, um, too high we we can skip past this um mm, actually problem is this is, could be negative or it could be positive so we're, basically what we're going to have is we're either going to have um bit seven set or on set and, and the thing is because it's too complex it's not like we can just check a bit six or something that's not gonna it's not gonna work um uh, everyone's steam yeah well you can imagine what you, well you know what i'm like with tech can you imagine what i'm like with steam i'm bad with steam as well I have like a thousand games on there or something crazy. Um, yeah, I'm I'm exactly the same. I I bought so many games. Uh, I. I even, I even at one stage, I even installed every single game that I had 
because I had a really big hard drive. I, I had a massive hard drive and I had a fast connection, so I just installed every game I had. And I still didn't play any of them. I played like two or three of them. <laughs> it was just stupid. Um, okay, right. Let's let's worry about the uh, the comparisons after we've done this. So let's uh, yeah, let's let's just do the Y now. So that that's the X. So let's do the Y. The Y is going to be a lot easier. So here we just need uh, player Y plus one. Um, and we need to subtract data dot y pos comma x, uh, and then we need to half that value. So we're going to shift it to the right, uh, and that will give us distance y divided by two. Here. Yeah. So now we've got an X and a Y value, which we can use to work out the distance to, to the player. Now, we already have uh, a distance lookup routine. Now, I cannot remember for the life of me where that's going to be. Um, so I'm going to go and have a look around. I think it might be in Entities. We get Distance Player to Entity. Uh, okay, we're going to have to do this ourselves manually, I think. Because this is specific to... Yeah, this is... All right, we can just copy this in. So this is player to power up. Uh, that's power up distance. Um, I think we can still use the entity temps. They're fine. Uh, yeah, right, they're fine. Okay, so. Just call that max disk, no point in changing it there. Player center X and player center Y. Now, they they hopefully are... Yes, there's zero. So these are already set. That's pretty good. That, that makes this nice and simple. Although, it doesn't need to be that. Hang on. We know the difference already as we've got these values. So let's let's take a look at this. This is going to be simplified. Okay, so we don't need the difference. We can store that. Um, we can pass that in, I guess. Yeah, we can pass that in. So, so what we'll do is we'll store. Uh, Oh no, we've got we've got it here in these files. Okay, so so look. So let's say our, um, our maximum distance to power up should be eight or something. Hey, Anonym PDA, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so in that case, when we call this routine, we will store that value, but then we're going to grab these values here. So we're going to grab the difference this way. Like so. 
So this is going to give us our X and a Y. Um, and this 8 is in char uh, distance. Now, the reason why I'm not immediately storing these values as char, like not doing divide by 8 here, or um, is because we're going to want to move these sprites towards the player. So we need more granularity on these to be able to move the sprite. So I'm going to do that in here instead. So um, this is divided by 2, so I need to divide by 2 again and divide by 2 again. Um, now, however, this is actually not going to... Um, I need to do this. So the reason I'm doing a compare to 80 here is because I need to set the carry flag if it's negative. And the reason I need to set the carry flag is because when I roll to the right, if the number is negative, that that bit will move along uh, and then I'll basically lose lose that uh, the negative value. So by doing compare 80 and a roll, you're basically doing a, a shift of a signed, signed value. So it's a good trick to, in fact, I'll write in here. So when, whenever we see it, so uh, shift right, signed number, you can sign. So you have to compare 80 each time, but you compare and then do a roll, compare and do a roll, and then that will maintain the sign for that value. So there you go, that's divided by four now. Um, so that means the total value, the total value is in, in dx and dy is now divided by eight of this this thing. Um, and so we shall get ff returned or the distance. Okay. So here we go. If if this is if this is minus, I'm going to jump to here. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the border. So what this should hopefully do is is allow me to just test that I'm getting close enough to the um, to the sprite. And what I should see is if I, if I move away, the border will stop flashing. If I move towards it, the border will flash. Hopefully, it stays on screen long enough for me to notice that. Okay, so I have to go off the screen for this and then come back. Okay. Oh, I need to get rid of the breakpoint at the bottom. Really looking forward to the giveaway this week, and I must say. Um, it's the first non Commodore giveaway as well, so it's going to be uh, interesting to see who takes part. Um, I mean, it's it's a nice it's a nice little system to be honest. Okay, when it's flashing, it doesn't actually it doesn't actually um, doesn't actually do the rest, so. Uh, let me just check. Skip flash. Small six, so otherwise it's going to do this. Um, that's interesting. This should still flash, but for some reason it's not doing. So what happens when, when it's animating is it comes in here and it checks the timer. If the timer drops below this value, then it then it runs this piece of code here. Um, but this piece of code isn't doing it. It's only changing the accumulator. It's not changing anything else. Um, so when it comes to move player, this should work absolutely fine. Um, So I'm not entirely sure why it's not. Let's uh, let's run that again just to be sure. I 
para dapat niya yung money. I'd like to take, oh, we missed that. I'd like to take part, but I won't since I would use it only once for the novelty. <laughs> Uh, Amiga type one in the future, yes, possibly. Um, so I have got this uh, case, uh, which is uh, a Raspberry Pi case. The Pi fits in here. You take this panel off, and you can fit a Pi in the back here. Uh, but it's a nice, nice little keyboard, uh, and it's got a touchpad on this side. So I think it would work really well for like an Amiga or an Archimedes or something like that. So I'm not I'm not sure what to do with it yet. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into that. Then maybe that could be the Christmas one actually. So let's have a look. State's flashing. Oh, it is flashing. Okay. Okay, maybe it was just because I was on the wrong side of it. Okay, let's. Uh... Okay, if I'm above it. Okay, I think I've got a. Yeah, there's there seems to be an issue with negative y values. Okay, okay, that's fine. Let's just go and have a quick look. I've probably done something wrong in here. Uh, well, this looks like it should be correct. Um, okay, it looks like it should be all right. Let's have a look at what values it gets in here. So let's, uh, let's stick a break here. Ah, uh, this is going to fail. Um, hang on, what are we doing? We're doing, uh, player minus the power. Up. So if the player is, yeah, okay. So let's put this. Um, let's put this here. So the Pi, the Pi 400 I'm going to use, so I've got one of those as well, but that is, I'm keeping that one. That's going to be my tick 80 machine. Um, so I'm running uh bare metal, uh, tick 80, um, on that. And what that will allow me to do is to, um, Basically, I have like a Pico 8 environment. Um, oh, why is that not working? That's weird. It's not picking up as negative. Interesting. Um, it would allow me to have a, a, a like a, a machine that kind of behaves like an old retro computer. You turn it on, you go straight into a programming environment. Um, no Linux installed, just directly into the into the uh, thing. So that's what I'm going to do with it. Should be pretty cool, I think. It's another one that's going on my my shelf of console stuff. Okay, for some reason this is not not working. Okay, so let's. Uh, I just want to try something. Switch on and code, love it. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I that's what I really want to do with it. So I I considered a few other things with it, but I mean, really, if you're getting a Pi four hundred, you're getting it for one of two reasons. You're either getting it because you want to have a very very cheap um, desktop computer that's ready to go that doesn't need any kind of case or weird configuration that's got a keyboard that's easy to plug a mouse into, easy to plug into a TV. Um, or you're using it as a as a as a retro pie uh, gaming machine, and neither of those really appeal to me. So, so for me, it's because I already have a retro pie in my PC, so I can already you know I can already run th what I want with that, uh, and I have a desktop computer already, and I have laptops and things, so it's not like I need uh, that. So I'm adding the third case in here, which is um, yeah, that's not right, is it? Uh, which is for um, like 
uh, which is for a, a retro style computer. So you turn it, you, you turn it on. It's just a keyboard. You just plug in the keyboard. You turn it on, and you're straight into a dev environment. And I think that's I think that's a kind of uh, a much better use of it. So I said two reasons. There's two main reasons, but I, I think the third reason will end up being quite popular for it. So. <laughs> okay, so I put a breakpoint in, and what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and enter this screen at this height and see if it breaks. And it is breaking, okay. Ah, but our accumulator says 7C. Which tells me hang on. That means that bit is not set. So let's have a look at this in terms of a slight this value is wrong for some reason. What have I done wrong here? So I take my player Y plus one, yeah, and I subtract my Y position. Ah, uh, the problem is I'm doing this. This is a negative number and I'm doing this. So as I say, I can't do that. Um, I can do it before. So like here, it's it's fine to do it here because it's, it's, it's uh, before the subtraction. It's when the subtraction happens, the result can be negative. So what I need to do is I need to do this compare 80 and then roll. Uh, again, this is so that you keep the signed values. Uh, it's a very useful useful trick that to to, uh, to remember. Uh, good night, Codrasil. Take care. Uh, can Pi 4... Yeah, Pi 4 does N64 fairly well. I mean, there's a couple of games it can't do uh, that well, but I mean, it's it's fairly decent. Um, I think when it can do the PlayStation 2 games well, I think that's going to be a massive jump for it um, because the, the PlayStation 2 library is huge and there's some really, really like quality games in there. Um, okay, okay, that looks fine there and that should flash the board. Yes, okay, awesome. Okay, let's give that a quick test again. Let's just get rid of the breakpoints in here. So this is fine now. Um, I'll take a break shortly. So it's a bit annoying I have to go off screen to do this, but... Um, but yeah, there you go. You can see I can move all the way around it and okay cool that means that the the calculation is is working now okay so how do we make this move towards the player um so the next so now we know we're in range at this point um so let's change that to exit there there we go And with this char distance here is um, the, the 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 range for picking up the power up. So it's fine if there's power up in here. Yeah. Okay. So const power up pick up range. And let's just set that to OA. And that's in a char um, uh, char units. There we go. I'm trying to say, as, trying to do as many of these values as I can as constants because because this is a because this is a conversion uh, a port from uh, one system to another. I want this to be as close as possible. Um, so having all these things that we can configure in the constants file is going to make that a lot easier to tweak later on. 
PS2 has many quality games. Also has Tomb Raider, Angel of Darkness. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what my 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 test my my test for how good a system is for emulating is always Gran Turismo. So I always see what's the latest version of Gran Turismo that I can play. Um, and at the moment, that is whatever the latest one is on the PS3 on on PCs. But it's just mainly because there isn't a PS4 emulator that that's uh, that does the job yet. Um, but you can play the latest uh, Gran Turismo, uh, the the last Gran Turismo from PS3 uh, on a PC with a relatively mid range spec, and, and it will it will run probably probably nowadays on a low spec actually. Um, but it's always a good one to test on on the uh, Pi as well. So Gran Turismo Two runs absolutely fine. Um, PS2 I don't think runs at all very well at all on the Pi yet. So, uh, so yeah, at, at the moment it's like for P for the Raspberry Pi is uh, N64. Try that out. See, see, there's a couple of games on the N64 that don't work very well, um, uh, and PS2 when that comes out. Uh, it'd be nice to get GameCube games on it as well. You mentioned when the GameCube emulator comes out, that's going to be kind of nice. Okay, all right. So uh, if the power up is in range, then we move towards the player. Okay. So how do we move towards the player? So we do have these values already in here. This is these are the values. These are the distances uh, between um, uh, the the distances between the uh, the object and the player. Now, what we could do is we could we could increase these values. Um, or, or decrease these values, basically reduce these values by a couple of pixels at a time, and we get a fairly smooth um, uh, animation. But what will tend to happen is if you've got like a very long, say you've got a, a triangle like this, um, yeah, and, and this is our player here, and this is the power up here. What's going to happen is if you move like the same amount of pixels on both axes at a time, you're going to get two frames where it moves diagonally. So it's going to go, uh, it's going to go across one like this, and then across like this, and then for the rest of the frames, it's just going to move along one axis. So it's going to look kind of wonky. So what I'm going to propose we do instead is we're going to use uh, a, a very cheap tweening uh, trick that I used to use on, uh, on on many things, which is um, oh god, I'm Batman World Two. Hey. Yeah, Ik Ikaruga are, are really really good actually. I'd, I'd never played that before. I think it was you who mentioned that actually uh, once, and I, I tried that out, and it was it's a bloody good game, that very good game. What do you call a troublesome Canadian high schooler routine? Chips and ch cheese and gravy. Uh, troublesome Canadian high school. So that doesn't make any sense to me. I guess you need to be Canadian or American to understand that. Okay. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do um, to um, uh, to to try to to animate this, um, and then I'm going to go for a quick break, and then when I come back, we'll do it. So what I'm going to do is is uh, is quite simple. I used to use this trick a lot. Um, I'm trying to think what things I've used. I have definitely used it on a lot, but I can't I can't think. Um, for the life of me now, where I've used it because I've, I've since doing this the first time I've used tweens a lot. So we imagine the same situation, right? We've got x. The distance to the x is is uh, ninety, uh, and the distance to y is let's say minus twenty, right? So what I'm going to do is every frame um, I'm going to add to the power up. Uh, so this is the this is the distance towards the player, right? Uh, so if I add 90 to the power-ups X, I will be on top of the player. If I add 90 to the power-ups Y, I'll be on top of the player. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this offset and I'm going to divide it by 4. So that's going to give us uh, over here uh, 22 because it's going to it's going to trunk it's just going to chop off any uh, indexes, uh, any um, uh, fractions, and minus 5. And then I'm going to add 
those to the X and the Y, which means on the next round, this would be, and that means that these are moving basically along the same, um, al along the same uh, tangent, basically, that we'd need to, to go towards the player. We're moving, we're moving a quarter of the way towards the player. And then on the next frame, we're now um, 68 away and minus 15 away. And I'm just going to do the same again. I'm just going to, whoops, I'm just going to add a quarter onto it. And you can see all this is going to do is every frame you move. God damn it, why's my key come off? Every frame you just move a quarter of the way, quarter of the remaining distance towards the uh, towards the, uh, the, the the target. So this time it'd be minus seven, and this would be like minus three. That's going to end up being 12, and that's going to end up being 51. And so on and so on. And what, there's, what that's going to do is you initially you're going to move quite quickly, um, and then as you get closer, uh, you'll you'll slow down as you as you approach the target. So it's not going to match the it's not going to match exactly the checkanoid um, system. But what it's going to do it's going to be very it's going to be very smooth along the right tangent towards the player. We're not going to have to do any crazy kind of uh, Bresnan line algorithms or anything like that to work out the 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 way to move it we're not going to need to do any tweening this is going to be a natural tween it's going to be like an ease out tween i think uh or ease i can never remember which one is which ease in or ease out but um it's going to allow us uh using just simple shifting of values uh and some addition and subtraction um to actually move correctly towards the player uh towards the um uh the thing is that what it's called Zenus paradox interpolation Honestly, is that what it's called? Cool. You know, it had a name. It's just something I'd always done. I'd never, never knew it had a name or, um, or whatever. But it's a. Uh... Oh, okay. <laughs> See, I, I'll believe anything. I'll believe anything. All right, I'm going to take a quick break, guys. When I come back, we'll we'll do that. Um, we'll implement that. It should be pretty easy to do. Uh, what that's going to do is it means that the the item is just going to basically follow the player around. Um, and and so the next step then will be picking it up. We it doesn't matter if it follows us around until it disappears because what will happen is once we have the sprite collision in, we'll just pick it up as soon as we um as soon as we uh as soon as we touch it. All right, I'll be back in uh, a few minutes, guys. Uh, give me three or four minutes. I'll put the uh, quiz on. All right, be right back. Well, right, I'm back. Stop that. Let's see who's going to get this. I think we've gone through all. I don't think we've gone through them all yet, have we? So, hey, Cosmin, welcome to the stream. Oh, nice. You got that one, SP. Nice. It's a good game as well. Um, okay, so we've got these values already. We just need to basically add these to our uh, power up. So, so let's start with the x value. So um, we basically need to take the power up half x value, and we need to add. So what we're going to do is we're going to move one quarter distance towards the player. Okay, so. Let's start by getting our value. So this is our distance. And now this is our distance divided by two already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to half this again. Uh, is that right? Because we need to add to, yeah, okay. So, again, this could be negative, so we need to do the compare with 80 and then roll it. Um, and then we're just going to add that to our half pulse here, and we're going to store that 
here as well. Now I do need to check that the X registry is not being bashed in here, uh, which it is not. So that is good. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and that's going to move one quarter of the distance across along the X towards the player. Uh, and then we need to do the same with the Y as well. So the Y, um, uh, so that's divide. Yeah. Okay. I think that's, I think I might need to half this again, actually. I think I need to half that twice because it's a half distance. So let's, let's see how that goes. I think that might be all right. Let's 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 give that a try, see what happens. There's a guard. Okay, let's go off the screen. Hopefully now should start moving towards the player, which it's not doing. Okay. So why is that not moving towards the player? Okay, so um Okay, I'm gonna put a breakpoint here. We're gonna skip through and see uh what happens. Moving across the X. I'm not sure why that's not working. <laughs> I like this sun promise. Hey, Russell Mills. Okay, so there's a break point. So I forgot what I was doing there, what I was checking. Um, Okay, so we're checking how much we need to move. So seven. Uh, I'm going to add to the data half cost. So that's this position here. Uh, so I would expect. Okay, that should have stored that in the accumulator. Why has that not moved it then? Ah, okay. It's not moved it because we're not actually transferring that data from there. So whenever we do this update, we need to also update the, uh, the multiplexer data to match it as well. So that's pretty easy to do. Um, I'm going to take just a chunk of this. Um, So we need to do that here basically. So what we need to do first of all, uh, so we need to load the Y register with our sprite index because we need to know what our multiplexer sprite index is. Uh, we don't need to affect the frame. We do need our Y position uh, and we can store that at uh, multiplayer data Y plus comma Y like so. And here we do need to do some extra stuff. So we need to get our X position I need to shift it to the left and store that value here. Uh, ah, that's that should be it. Okay, so let's put a little note up here to say we're doing. Now we have calculated new position by two flexor. Well, hopefully now we should see it move towards the player. Uh, let me just get rid of that breakpoint there because I think that's fine. Okay, so gosh, I've got to really need to turn that HDR off when I'm coding. It really makes my screen flick like crazy. Oh, that moved very, very quickly. So. You can see it's following me around now, but it moved very quickly. So I'm going to slow it down 
Um, so in order to slow it down, basically, I just need to half it a few more times. So if I half it one more time uh, and half this one more time, so now it's just going to do one eighth of the distance towards the player. Is Technoid going to be cut? Yes, it's it's very specifically using uh, some techniques that can only really be done with the with the cartridge, um, namely that it's doing dynamic uh, dynamic font building uh, from the cartridge. That kind of looks all right. Sweet, that looks like it's working pretty decently. Uh, and you can see because it's, oh, that was interesting. Oh, something went horribly wrong there. Okay, that was interesting. Something something went a bit skew with then. Uh, it's interesting because we're not doing anything outside of this loop. X is remaining the same. Um, so at least I think it's remaining the same. So yeah, and we're not changing X in any way. This is not changing X in any way. Yeah, let's just try that again. Yeah, sprite pointers were wrong for some reason. I don't know why, because they, they weren't being changed. So, uh, all the cart slots are going to wear down at this rate. I'm a bit sad because I'm going to use it. Yeah, but I think I think the thing is, is um, we're, we're, we're in an age now where really we should be, we should be using things like cartridges to get the most out of the machine. Um, oh, what is going on here? Okay, so one, one thing I have noticed. Um, is because it's rounding the value um, uh, because it's rounding the value down. Well, it's just, it's not. It's just flooring the value. Um, it does mean that the the um, like if I come from this angle. Oh, actually, it's not. Wait, what? My bro oh, okay. There's something weird going on with this. Something weird going on with this. Could it be the remove the power up, maybe? Well, that would lock the, potentially it could lock the, the multiplexer up, but, um, okay. Uh, what, what I want to do before, before that is, uh, just here, um, uh, I want to add uh, a value to this. The reason why I want to add a value here is because at the moment it's flooring the value down. Uh, so by adding this four here, um, it's going to turn it into a round. Uh, and what that means is that when, there we go. Um, no matter which direction that power up kind of moves towards the player, it should always kind of center on the player. Whereas at the moment it's not doing that, it's kind of getting stuck slowly. So, whereas the cartridges are hardware, it runs on future cart sounds much better. We define a limitation and the machine can be removed. Yes, but I think as long as you are using a cartridge that was available, cartridge um, technology that was available at the time, which, which currently all the carts are, um, with the exception of. Um, uh, with the exception of the save feature, I don't think cartridges had save features back then because they would have had to have been uh, battery backed um, back then. But um, other than that, I mean, the you know, Gmod and uh, Magic Desk, they're essentially just ocean cards. 
Um, I think that's absolutely fine. But yeah, you're right. Um, things like Turbo, Turbo Chameleon and stuff change the hardware massively. Um, and it's certainly certainly possible to combine a software cartridge. Um, I need to add eight here because I'm doing three of them. Um, it's certainly possible to combine uh, a software cartridge with with a hardware cartridge as well. But that's not why I'm trying to do this. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to write something um, that gives me the power, um, as much power as I can get out of the machine using readily available kind of software. Um, cartridges it's still not right it's still not following properly on that side for some reason um yeah um yeah i mean the same thing super cpu was was available at the time as well so you could you could argue that that's a valid uh piece of kit as well um okay i'm a bit concerned over the um the positioning of that I, I need to turn I tell you what I need to do I need to turn the time off so it doesn't disappear uh, just gonna do that there that should just disable it for now um I mean it would have been totally possible to do this game as a disc game um but it would have it would have been a cut down version uh and i didn't want to make a version that that lacked things just because of hardware limitations uh, um uh, because, sorry the, the format limitations Let's see if i go up so what i'm what i'm expecting is for it to to kind of settle on the middle of me which it as does do when i go down but when i'm behind it it's not doing that that could be because the rounding isn't working on a negative scale. Um, so I want to check now if I if I keep going off screen. Okay, that jumps to me very quickly. Uh, that seems to be the problem. I think it's not resetting these power ups between screens properly. Because look, now I've got that weird thing following me around. Now, what? Okay, so at least I know it's not to do with removing the sprite. It's definitely something to do with the power up though. Um now it's just completely broken. Okay, let's have a look at the reset routine in here. What is the reset routine actually doing? Should just be resetting everything. Oh, hang on. Uh, is it resetting this there? Ah, yeah, there we go. Max items should be max power ups. That's the problem. So, uh, in fact, I know how to recreate it now. So, if I look at max power ups, we had four. So, if I go on and off the screen four times, it will expand past where I want it to. Okay, so this is the first power up, second power up, third power up, fourth power up. Now it will break. Uh, maybe on the next one. Might have to go through a few times. There, there we go. Okay, but I think that's simply because it's not checking for the proper end of the power up 
array, which it should be doing here. So it should be fine now. So I do it again. I'm going to go off on and off the screen like eight times or something. Yeah, I, I think while it would have been possible to do this game without cartridge, it would have it would have ended up being less than it could have been. Um, by using cartridge, I'm using that space to allow me to have um, a character set that's you know 500 and odd characters, um, and certain effects that are in this game that, that I've not got to yet um, are going to use sprite space like it's candy. They're just gonna they're just going to suck up all the sprite space, um, but because I'm loading from cartridge, I can load, I can load my sprites per screen. Um, that just wouldn't be possible uh, on a disc. You would either have to split the game into into sections and load each section separately, which would have changed the the kind of the game quite a lot. There's only really one place in this whole uh, in this whole map that which is a, a which could you could say is a level break and would be level two so you just have level one and level two but uh the car is 512 kilobytes uh of which i'm using oh, it doesn't tell me actually uh not that much but lots of things uh i'm using about a quarter at the moment i'm using about 100 and 128k just over um but that's because i do have a massive character set in it at the moment which is going to be reduced um and i've got 34 maps in at the moment as well and the maps are all 16-bit values so um it's not going to get much bigger than this i don't think um Anyway, that seems to be fixed, so that's pretty good. So now we just need to make sure that whenever I move, see, like when I move in this direction to the right, it keeps perfect center on me. And when I go down, I mean, it's slow, but it does. Okay, why well, needs to speed up a bit? Does that matter because when you get that close, you picked it up? Well, it kind of does because what it in, what it means is that it's it's slowing down, um, it's slowing down quicker when you move in this direction. So it'd actually be if you want to pick a power up, you're better off always moving down and to the right because that way you will you will grab it quicker. Um, and I don't want that. I want it to be I want it to be smooth and even. So. Um, it doesn't matter a lot, but I, I, I think for the feel of the game, it won't feel quite right. You'll something will feel off. So, um, likewise, if you look at moving this way, it keeps up with me all the way. Uh, but when I go this way, it's not keeping up with me at all. So I'm going to reduce the uh, the Y by one, uh, one one division on here. So I'm going to. Change that to two. I think that rounding is probably not working because of a negative value. Um, it basically needs it needs changing depending on whether it's negative or positive. Uh, but first of all, let's just get it moving the right speed up and down. Okay, that's fine. That's keeping up with me now. So that's good. I think I actually still think it needs slowing down a little bit. Oh, I don't like that. I mean, it, it jumps to me immediately when I shouldn't be doing that. I think like if I if I do that here, that here. I'm just trying to get the speeds right now. 
Python rounding. <laughs> Python rounding really, really pissed me off. I mean, just, uh, Ah, yeah, interestingly, the yeah, it is the rounding that's causing the problem. Yeah, okay, the rounding is, is the problem here. Okay, so... So I'm going to put skip here. And I'm going to put neg here. Right, let's try that on the X. Round half up is objectively correct because don't don't start. Um, I haven't seen, I, I saw that, um, Apple had done some, um, benchmarks, but that's, I mean, that means bugger all really, let's be honest. Uh, cause what they'll be testing is an Apple ARM versus an Apple i9 and an Apple i9 does not run at i9 speeds. Uh, it thermal throttles constantly. So, um, so it's bullshit anyway. I'll, I'll wait for proper objective third party reviews. Um, yeah, third party reviews are, are what's going to really matter. Um, Apple, they've all done it. Nvidia have done it this year. AMD have done it this year. Um, and now Apple are doing it, just basically talking crap um, in order to sell, you know, in, in order to make their things seem better than uh, the opponents. So. Okay, right, let's see. So, yeah, that's now keeping... There we go, so it's working both. See, now that rounding works properly now, left and right. So now we just need to do up and down as well. Doesn't matter that it's wobbling, that's fine. Um, add 10 or subtract 10. Uh... Doctor, wait, what was Doctor Wine? Oh yeah, there is no wine. Is just a, uh, it's just cider tonight. Uh, I would have thought Apple to Apple comparison is legit in terms of their choice of architecture. Yes, but the the what they're doing is they're 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 unfairly comparing um, a chip which is is designed to run cool uh, and in mobile devices uh, against a chip in a device that is. Thin and mobile, and and need does and needs a lot of cooling if it's going to get hot. Uh, against an i nine, which is not designed at all to be in a wafer thin uh, laptop with shitty cooling. Um, uh, oh no, yep, sorry, thank you, thank you, Duxter, and thank you, uh, Busley, who pointed that out. Um, yeah, I'm surprised that actually works. That's interesting. Intel i9 is all right for laptops if the laptop is cooled properly. The problem is, is the moment you do anything of anything intense on an Apple, it gets really hot and it it slows down. You get about three or four seconds of top speed and then it slows down. I've got an i9 laptop and it's pretty good, but the only reason it's decent is because it has a very very good cooler in it. It still gets bloody hot and it still throttles now and again, but nowhere near as much as the uh, as the Apples do. To be honest, I think I think Intel has got a lot of problems at the moment. Uh, first and foremost, AMD uh, are absolutely wiping the floor with them at the moment, um, and that must be that must be scary for them because um, they they could see it coming, and now they now it's properly upon them. The latest round of AMD is is basically taking the piss out of Intel. Um, 
what i9 laptop is better what do you mean i've got um i'll show you my so i've got this thing and the reason this this works quite well with an i9 firstly is because it's well ventilated so lots of vents here lots of vents on the side everything is very well ventilated but i don't know if you can see that as well it's quite thick and when you stand it up um on a on a desk it, it lifts the whole back of the the uh, uh the laptop up plus it's a 4k touch screen with a second 4k touch screen so i wouldn't even dream of um buying a mac but when you can buy this for the same price and it's way better let's give that a try it should be right uh, it will run hot if I if I put a game on it and I put something intensive on it. It will run hot, uh, but the thing is, is it's um, it's uh, it's designed to 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 dissipate that heat well, uh, which the Macs are, are simply not designed to do. Uh, Apple have gone and have have done for years. They've they've gone for uh, form over function. Uh, their laptops are very thin, uh, which is. Is is what they like. That's what they. That's what helps them sell their laptops. So, okay, this is fine. I mean, it's jittering around, but that's absolutely fine. You'll have picked it up by now. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's an Asus uh, ZenBook Duo. Um, it's very nice. Uh, the laptop surface touch temp. So the top is fine. The bottom does get hot, but then it is lifted as lifted off the um, off the desk as well. So, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't use it on my lap if I was gaming. I would definitely keep it on. I have like a, a cushion with a a table cushion sort of thing, um, so I can put it on put it on my lap and it's still on a on a flat surface. He said Mac i9 laptop. No, I'm not saying that they're not good. Mac i9 Macs are fine. It's just a bit of a waste, really. If you're gonna buy, if you're gonna buy a Mac, you may a MacBook. You may as well get an i7 because you, you're probably gonna get a similar performance out of it anyway. Um, so in in that sense, I can see why ARM is good for them. Um, but one of the one of the things that made cracked me up was um, ARM is currently it's only gonna work with. Um, uh, 16 gigs of RAM and no external uh, GPUs as well. So they really, if, if you want a performance machine, you can't really go for ARM. You kind of have to stick with Intel at the moment because nobody, no creator in their right mind, is going to go for an ARM machine because it's only got 16 gig of RAM in it. Um, and the creators are going to need 32 gig, 64, you know, depending on what they're doing. So uh creators well you, you know what i mean creatives i guess not creators the people people doing rendering and 3d rendering and uh large photoshop editing and stuff they're going to need more than 16 gig it's just not enough it really isn't enough um so so while it is going to perform um perform quite well for those machines it's not it's still not ideal and you're still going to have to convert your software to run with it so um okay that that is now moving towards the player perfectly fine so the next step is to make this um power up be picked up so we need another um check now to check if we're touching the player and if we're touching the player um pick it up we may as well put this in in the move to player function here actually uh, and in fact we don't even really need to uh do anything special we've already kind of got this um these values down here right so all we all we really have to do here is um if it's moving towards the player we just need to grab these these values here once these get within a certain range so let's do it here so let's um Okay, let's. I'm going to have to invert these here as well. So, so if it's plus, I jump to here. 
otherwise And so we can compare that to a range. So this is along the X. Um, so if we just check 12, if we're within 12, then we should be touching it. Um, actually, no, sorry, within, because we're checking, uh, we're checking top left of the player to top left of the sprite. So it's 24, actually, isn't it? So it's just full sprite. Um, if we're not within that range, I, we're, we're more than that range, we can jump straight to exit. However, if we are in that range, then now we can check uh, the Y as well. So same thing. And this time we're going to check 21. Uh, and if it's more than we go to exit, otherwise we're going to come to this position here and we're going to increment. So now hopefully when we're over the icon, the border should flash. Oops. Uh, so I just catch up with the thing. I was very much optimized going with your manage through the kicker app. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to slow down that approach because I'm, I'm a bit worried that that's happening way too quickly now. Uh, so I'm actually going to slow it down with a timer in here now. Um, Oh, we are already doing an update every other frame here. Let's just copy that whole thing. So we know that that, that is going to pass. So let's do, all we need to do is just increment that, I think. I could say keys on my keyboard come off far too easily. Uh, oh, hey, hey, it's come to join the quiz. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, that's obviously not right because it's happening way too quick. Ah, this is because this is divided by two, isn't it? So, good evening, D. <laughs> thanks, Endar, for the uh, for the bits there. Oh, thanks, Endar, for the host as well. I missed that. I must have been I must have been uh, taking a break at that point. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the bits, Endar. Okay, these comparisons need to be less because these are half values. So this did need to be C, uh, and this does need to be half of this. So it's like zero A. But they seem to happen quicker than that still. So let's give it a try. <laughs> no problem, Duxter. I laugh in face three three. TTS is getting more and more stupid i think as we go along uh but yeah thank you for the bits doc and it's always a pleasure uh to to do this it really is okay that seemed to be fine um i'm trying to get ahead of it now there you go see how it stops stops okay that's that seems to be fine i'm going to reduce it ever so slightly so i'm going to reduce it by two on this one two on this one TTS is becoming a politician. <laughs> oh, man. Crazy times. Cool. There we go. And you can see now that um, actually it's 
it's a lot slower at catching up that way than it is at catching up this way. So I think I still need to, to do some changes here. It's fine along the Y, uh, but not along the X. So if I move that way, it stays with me. If I move this way, it's very slow to keep up. It's fine that way. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that now. That seems to be fine. So we know here we have grabbed the power up. So we're going to add the tech, whatever we need to do in there. Now, the power ups, um, what time are we on? All right, we've got time. Yeah, we might still have time to do it. Uh, there's a few different power ups. I can't remember what they all are. I'll have to have a look through, but we can add a couple of them in now. Um, and then I think probably on the next stream, we'll, we'll focus on uh, changing the, uh, the weapon so that you can upgrade the weapon and, and grab all the different weapon stuff. Um, Okay, so we've still got a little issue with it on the X register, on the X, uh, in the X direction. Um, is it because this number's wrong? Should I be, should it be zero eight? I'm not just trying to. It seems to be fine on the Y, just not on the X. Seems a lot slower when when the player is ahead of it. I mean, it's at this point, it's kind of minor, um, but you see, it's not it's not landing properly. It is that way. But not that way. Can't be different on both axes, so it just wouldn't make any sense. Uh... Okay, I cannot explain why that is the case. Um, I probably could if I sat and thought about it, but I'm not going to sit and think about it because I can't be bothered. Uh, but for some reason, when I go that way, it's slow to keep up. But when I go that way, it's not. Ah, but it's actually... It's actually one... Oh, no, maybe not actually. One width apart. No, it's different width apart each time. But it always ends on top of which is good, so. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the frame timer now because I don't want it to be that slow. To be quick. And now we can pick the power up. So uh, if we're touching it, we've grabbed the power up, so we need to remove the power up here. Uh, removing does we, is this, basically. We need to do these things. So we need to award it and then we need to remove it. So removing it is basically uh, storing zero in that location. Uh, X here, yeah. I can't guarantee we've got that at that point. 
I think we have, but I'm I'm just going to load it again anyway. Okay, so this should remove it. Um, so hopefully now when we grab it, it should disappear. And then with that in place, we can make it spawn from uh, one of the... There we go, that's pretty cool. I think I want it to be a bit closer, actually. I think it's just a little bit too soon. So let's uh, let's reduce these values a little bit more. So I'm going to half these, in fact. <laughs> Turn that into. All right, let's get my next let's cider open. It does wobble a bit. I'm not keen on the wobble. Okay, let's just let's just get rid of this bit for a second. I just want to work out why it's wobbling. Uh, I think that's probably due to this rounding stuff here. Um, Okay, so I just want to, I want it to follow me around, so. Okay, so it's jittering up and down, or left and right, depending on where I move. Which would imply that the rounding is... Ah, because if these are zero... Four, two, one. So it would still be one. So this probably needs to be that. One, two, four, eight. See, that should be, these should be way less. Might solve, solve some of the issues. Let's have a look. The jittering is because we're always, um, we're always adding some value to it uh, because of the rounding. So I either need to make sure um, that the rounding doesn't um, accidentally round up. You know, see, that's not, it's not getting close enough now. So the rounding is required. So when I go up, when I go down, that seems fine. But when I go left and I go right, it's not, it's not fine. Oh wait, hang on. One, two, four, eight, sixteen. Okay, that might be enough like that. Yeah, I have very good memories of Terminator Two. Um, I remember being quite into Guns and Roses at the time as well, which was kind of useful because they did the soundtrack. So. Ah, see, it's still not if I'm on the positive here. So if it needs to move positively, it's still not quite enough, which means it's going to jitter again. So this really needs to be a one zero for it to work, but I think this is going to cause it to, to jitter. Hey, Sean, how are you doing? Sean's been playing his 2080 Ti tonight. So he's sending me messages earlier telling me how, how nice it looks. See, the jitter is still there. Now, that jitter is there because this value could be almost zero. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to do this. 
I think that should prevent any rounding if we're already at zero, so it should stop the jitter. It did look awesome, yeah. Yeah, the the ray tracing is really good, uh, I've got to say, and they've improved it a lot as well, so. You should, um, you should try uh, Metro Exodus. That looks that looks very very good, um, with the ray tracing on. Also, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is good as well, but it's hard to run Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It's it's not. Um, there you go. That seems better. There you go. It's not jittering now. It's good. Right. Cool. Let's put everything back then. So. Uh, what do I need to do? Oh, we need to pick it up. Yeah, it looks it looks really nice on the card. I definitely give it a, give it a play. Definitely, sweet. There we go. So that's now working properly. So if I stay there, it should flash. If I get close enough, I should be able to pick it up. Excellent. Okay, let's uh, let's change them now to appear in these. So in the moment the the uh the crate does nothing when it explodes, but we can make it appear uh from those when we explode them. So in order to do that, um we basically need to call this this function. Um I'm just gonna copy it. Uh comment it. There we go. Um and that needs to happen um when something explodes now is it going to be entities it's not entities is it because entities are our minds and things like that i don't think we call them entities uh i might be wrong though i'm gonna take a look no these are what we've got here so Or are we? I can't remember what we call them there. Oh, they are entities, aren't they? Of course they are, because it, it's going to sit. So when you come into the screen, yes, this, this is a list of entities in here. They are entities. It's just some are interactive entities as well. Okay. <laughs> hey, bad boy. Taking a break from homework. Uh, oh, who who got that quiz question? Did it award it to? It should have awarded it to Steps if it was IK plus. Hopefully, it worked okay. I think that's one where I had to put a couple of different. Um, oh, it wasn't plus. It was International Karate. Okay. So did did uh did Kev did you get it then? Cool, good. I'm I'm always worried with ones like that where they've got kind of multiple versions and slight differences in the name. So it's always interesting to make sure that those work. So that's good. Okay, so it is going to be in entities, and I'm pretty sure in entities we have. Uh, an explode entity function somewhere uh, from the set persistence update entities explode entity um, ah no it's not though is it this is actually this is where the um, the entity itself explodes so the uh, the mines and things like that so it's not that it is 
I'll remove it before I did that. No. Uh, I've just got to figure out where it is. So when you hit an item, date mine. Or maybe it's not in this bit. It's like six way. Uh, hang on. So the player shoots a bullet. Let's find the bullet. Just got to trace it through the code to figure out. Okay, so here's where we shoot. We add bullets, right? So then we're going to bullets, which is in our particle system here. Bullets get added here, then they get updated and drawn. Uh, update here. Bullet has hit something here. Destroyable. That's it. Destroyables. Neither was something else that they were called. Destroyable. There we go. And then annoyingly, we have this remove item thing, but remove item doesn't actually remove the um, thing yet. It only removes it if we've got to the point where it's dead, which is at this bit here, which is now where we're plotting the black. So this is removing the item completely. No. Yes, this is, yeah, sorry, this is, yeah, it is. Okay, so this has removed the item here. So let me just put that in there, just to make sure that this over. So what this should do is just spawn a power up in the same place that we were spawning it before, if you destroy something. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to work wherever, whatever we destroy here. Um, but we need it to, we need it to work for the crates here, so... Now, at the moment, we spawn an item from these. So wherever it is that we call the spawn item code for this 100 here, see how it spawned that power up there? And let the power up disappear. And again, it spawns, and I should be able to pick it up. Okay. So I want to work out where that, that is being created, because I think if we can piggyback on that, that's going to be the right place. Add item. Here we go. Drop item. Exit moon. Okay, drop item. Bonus type. Ah, here we go. Bonus type 10. Okay, so. Okay, let's just just gonna put that in there temporarily. Uh, I need to work out now um, if what this bonus type temp is. So this is the bonus type in here. So let's have a look in our asset export uh, in our persist data here and on the first screen. Okay, so bonus type is this one here. If it's a bonus pod, it will be three here. Now, is that going to be the same? Okay, this means they're explodable. Yeah, bonus type there. Okay, so. If it's zero, it's going to jump to here. If it's three or more, it's going to jump to here. So if it's one or two, it's going to do this. Okay, so. So it's this item type one or two, which is uh, barrel or spike. Uh, on the spawn item I'm going to put here so that's going to do it's going to spawn 
the correct item according to what it is, and then it's going to jump to here. Um, if it's zero, we can jump to done spawn item straight away. Otherwise, we're going to jump to here for a check for power up. Which is now going to be this one here. There we go. And so check for power up is actually going to. Um, hang on, I'm going to change this. Maybe I need to make this. Hello three. Yeah. Okay. So I'll do branch of equal. Check for power up. Otherwise, if it's more than three. We're going to jump to done spawn item because nothing that we need to pick up. Otherwise, we're going to be here. Check for power up. But we know at this point, um, let's call it spawn power up because we know it is actually spawning the power up. Okay, cool. So if I run that again, I should only get that item spawn when I shoot the power up pod this time. So. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, nice comment. Uh, just a man, not miracle worker. Imagine if you did your homework. Wish I could go to uni. Well, yeah, you would have had the chance, but you you weren't interested. I don't think you'd probably regret it now. But at the time, you weren't interested. So I said, I'll just do some homework now and then, see if we've learned anything. Uh, 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 uh. Sorry, just reading the chat, I just realised I've been completely silent. Um, yeah it is uh it is annoying the, the the amount of people that will pay for stuff is kind of quite quite slim so um you're not fond of educ yeah i i got that <laughs> when you were growing up definitely got that you hated school um that's fine you you've gone into a you, you you've got a you've got a vocational kind of job now so you're doing something that you you're learning to be a professional um you know it's a career it's not it's not a job it's a career which is what you want and that that's one of the hardest things to do is is get yourself especially without the education is get yourself into a career so okay that didn't spawn anything so that's a bit worrying okay so let's have a look at this again oh okay i've accidentally put a zero on the end of it so that was never going to work Unfortunately, most employers want the, uh, yeah, exactly. You're, you're professional. So that's the thing. Sometimes you just need somebody to take a chance on you. Um, that's how I got into, I don't have a single qualification in programming at all. Um, actually that's not true. I do have some B tech or something in, in macromedia software. Uh, I think it was director MX or whatever it was. Um, Director A, I can't remember what it was. It was what it was one of the it was one of the uh, shockwave things. That's the only thing I've ever had, and it wasn't really programming. It was just like, can you make this thing move across the screen? You you barely didn't need, you barely had to type any code whatsoever. Um, so we got um we got a project. I uh, like our, our end of term project was to uh was just create something in direct a very very simple um. You know, it could have been anything. It could have been like a little banner, advert banner. So I made a a, a zombie shooter. So I made a side scrolling zombie shooter, uh, where you blew things, where you blew zombies away with a shotgun. Um, and I think at that point they thought, hmm, maybe this is probably a little bit too easy for him, because um, I think they were just expecting me to make an advert, like a like a banner advert. But whatever. I'd love to see where I can find that actually. Uh, but I mean, by then I'd already been doing um, coding on on 
you know, I'd, I'd done all sorts of stuff. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't like it was the first time I'd coded anything. Um, I'd been coding a lot um, since I was seven years old. So you want a zombie shooter outfit now? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool as well. I had like a, I had a nice uh, little shotgun animation and it, the shotgun kicked um, and it blew the blew the zombies to pieces and there were like all blood trails all over the screen and everything. It was, it was quite cool. I'd love to find it. Uh, try coding in computer science. My brain just rejected the information. I was saying this today that I think that the problem, the problem with with trying to learn coding, it's like these books, right? It's the same with the same with the hacking stuff as well. Is that I don't learn by reading. I don't learn by being told something. I have to do it myself. Um, and I think you're not going to learn if somebody says, "Okay, well, if you learn by doing." Why don't you make a calculator? Because calculators aren't exciting. Nobody nobody wants to make a calculator. You make a calculator because your boss said, we need a calculator, make a calculator. Nobody's going out of their way to make a calculator. Games, on the other hand, you can make something you enjoy. And that's where I learn the best, by, by trying to find something, a game that I want to make that's a little bit beyond my technical level and learning from that. Um, books just become... Reference manuals. That's all they. That's all they are. Really. Hey, there we go. Right. So now all we need to do is make that actually spawn the item, instead of spawning it up in the middle of the screen somewhere. So where did we spawn that destroyables? Let's get rid of some of these. Rid of that. Okay. So we basically we need to. Um, we need to spawn something uh, with the half x value, a type. I'll just keep type as one for now, um, and the y value. So we've already got uh, destroy x and destroy y. These are going to be, I think these are going to be character values. So what I can do is if I just load, let's try it out. If I load destroy x and times it by four, so I'm going to shift it to the left twice, that's going to times this value by four. Uh, and then I'm going to add the, the left-hand border in. So the left-hand border is 24, but because we're using half values, I need to add a half of it. So add 0C, uh, and then transfer that to the X register, and that's this value here. And then for Y, we do the same thing, uh, but this time we need to times it by 8, because we need an actual Y value. And we're going to add uh, the full border at the top, which is 50 or 32 in hexadecimal. And then we're going to, well, that's already, it's just in the accumulator. So there we go. And that's it. That hopefully should spawn the power up in the right place now as well. So let's have a look. Education is more about learning the theory behind the stuff and vocabulary so you can communicate with your peers in the chosen field. Yes, and I think that is, you're right, Sender, because that is one area where I do uh, lack um, the kind of skill. I mean, I've, I've picked most of them up anyway over the years, but um, there, there's definitely times when there'll be, I don't know, some design pattern or something, and I don't know the name of it. I've used it and I do it myself, but I don't know the name of it because I've not been. I've not been formally trained in anything, so everything is just stuff that I, I kind of pick up as I go go along. So uh, what what was it? What was the I don't know what it was, what was the game? Uh he also did a PM for quiz where the exploding fist. Uh, uh, the way of the exploding fist. Uh, let me let me check. Yeah, exactly. So design design patterns is one area where I do struggle sometimes because I don't know the name. I mean, I've I've learned more and more of them as I as I go along, but I'm not. 
um, I haven't been formally training them. So even though I'm using them and I can communicate kind of how, how these things work, um, I'm not necessarily, I don't necessarily know the right names for them. So, um, um, well, it's got two, you know, they're both the way of the exploding fist. Uh, so yeah, way of the exploding fist should have worked, but I think maybe, maybe someone else got it, um, before you, so. Uh, no, you don't need the. You don't. You don't need the. Uh, you don't need the. the. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, this is one of the things about trying to keep the spam off the channel is that you are going to be in situations sometimes where um, you don't quite know if you were first or not. So, um, not a lot I can do about that without without having the channel spammed again. Um, or maybe I could have times that people, uh, I'm not sure, I'd have to think about it. Uh, So it's not highly valued. The, so the thing with, with hardware is um, the, the kind of level that you're doing at the moment, because, you, um, because you're young, because you've kind of had to go in uh, with no, um, no formal qualifications, you're kind of, you're being pushed in at kind of the bottom and you're having to work your way up. You will get to a point eventually in hardware where the stuff you're doing is complicated uh, and specialist. And and that's when that's when you will start being valued a lot, like network engineers and and things like that. They they will get um a lot more than than you know just a uh, standard support. So yeah, just um just keep at it. It's good that you've got yourself into what is essentially a career rather than um a dead end job, you know, you've got room to move up, you've got room to train and room to, to move into different fields. Um take advantage of it because um it's uh it's a good situation to be in. I, I wish I could it took me it took me till my late twenties. I think I was like twenty eight, twenty nine before I actually got what I would consider a kit career. Um before that i'd done everything i'd worked in bars i'd worked for insurance companies and um burger places i'd done everything so um it's good that you managed to do it and uh, it, you know you should be you should be pleased with yourself and um proud of yourself as well okay so we've got uh an illegal jump distance okay that's easy enough to fix and three, three, three. So illegal jump distances, um, we just have to flip it on its head, like so. Uh, I'm a bit concerned about this jump here. Actually, no, it's fine. It's just this one here. Okay. Yeah, it's exactly. Andy, Andy does. Um, Andy does uh, networking. So, if you ever want to speak to somebody about networking, speak with speak with Andy, Sean. He's. Um, he'll tell you what you need to get. And there we go. It's spawning. And hey, perfect, perfect. Okay, let's try that again. So let's go and find another power up. Thing. There's, there's one down here, isn't there? Oh, shit. Oh, we can't die yet. We need to make the, the death stuff happen. That's pretty cool. So we, we've got power ups kind of working. Um, okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> you might disown in most most network scripts are in Python. Oh God. 
Oh dear. Well, if he wants to learn Python, that's so be it. But um, yeah. Uh, so you have to go to Texas or something to get qualifications. What? No. Uh, database engineering would be interesting as well. Yeah, database is another thing that um, is another one that you can end up getting quite a bit for if you if you if you know how to uh, uh, set up, manipulate, kind of. Yeah, I mean, you probably won't get as much as a network engineer or a software engineer, but um, you you'll still do quite well with database stuff. Again, it's another one of those things we're always going to need database engineers. So. Uh, okay. Uh, it's true. Shallow food code doesn't like Python. But it doesn't like anything other than six five zero two. It's true. It's true. I I would I would rather everything be six five zero two. Well, if if modern developers were forced to write six five zero two, sixteen kilobyte games for three years before they wrote stuff, nobody would need more than eight gigabytes of RAM. The argument about needing all that RAM would be irrelevant because coders would be way more efficient with their RAM. They wouldn't just waste it all the time. Um, okay. Uh, Python is on the Cisco exams now. Haha. <laughs> Yeah, I'll never be taking them. Shannon playing Manic Mike. Oh, God, that was painful. I did not enjoy that at all. Uh, do we still want you to finish the first screen? No. <laughs> no. It's about how it's supposed to develop a time is versus RAM. I, yes, I mean, I think it's a, it's a little bit... Um, it's a little bit of both. I think I think developers are really lazy as well. I think that developers are very, uh, very quick to just. Well, it, it depending on the language, there's, there's two things that happen. Um, one, if they don't already have a library, then um, they have to think about it. And if they think about it, they don't always optimize. They just go for a, a solution rather than the optimal solution. Um, and if they do use a library, they don't do any investigation into whether it's a good library or whether whether it should be, um, you, you know, whether it, whether it should be quicker or whether it's done correctly. It's just oh, somebody's already done this, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna trust it 100, percent and I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna I'm gonna go with it. And for a lot of things, that's fine because a lot of libraries are, are you know well tested, well known. But there's just far too many things where people um, people do these things. Yeah, I I get that, but there's also a certain there's a certain level of skill that a developer should have when he's writing code. It's very easy to write um, optimal code without optimizing. Uh, you know, uh, last you can optimize as you go along if you know if you know your platform, if you know your language, and you know the techniques to do so. And the problem is, is there's far too many developers that don't know these things. They, they've got very limited knowledge. They can just about write, they can just about string a program together. Um, they don't particularly know how it works properly. They don't know why it's an optimum. They just carry, they just spunk stuff out like that. Spunk stuff out. That's not, that's a terrible, terrible phrase. They just chuck stuff out. <laughs> I apologize. That was horrible. <laughs> Um, I see it all the time. I see it all the time in JavaScript and in Java. I see, I see, I, I can look at a, a piece of JavaScript now after doing it for so long. I can look at 
look at a piece of JavaScript and I can tell you if that developer knew what they were doing or was winging it or not. Um, because there's there's certain there's certain give up the like telltale signs about about knowing how JavaScript works and how the browsers interpret and how Node interprets it. Um, <laughs> turns out they spent yeah I mean that's that's ridiculous yeah that that's um, uh, that that's not a good situation to be in, but. If a developer can write code that saves one millisecond on every HTTP request as they go along without spending a week on it, just by writing something in a different way, just by just by utilizing proper knowledge, um, then they should be doing it. And there's no excuse for not doing it other than incompetence. And that that is what bothers me. There's, there's far too many incompetent devs that because they can pass some arbitrary um, you know, entrance kind of uh, test, um, which is usually completely pointless anyway. I mean, the the interview tests, and I'm I'm guilty for for giving these interview tests to people as well. So I, I can't can't really complain too much about it. But they they tend to be pointless. I mean, you're you're giving a developer. I mean, a lot of the time you don't even give them a computer. Sometimes you just give them a whiteboard and a pen and say, uh, "Do me a fizz buzz routine." It's just like that's not how developers work. Developers don't write on whiteboards. They don't. <laughs> they don't write fizzbuzz routines. You, you, it's it's a pointless thing. I've just realised I'm going through all these levels. I didn't know I could do this. This is kind of cool. So let's see if I can blow these up and get get stuff out of them. Fizzbuzz face tweets. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's pointless, right? It's a stupid, stupid thing. Um, but that's what they that's what they do. So. Is the race done in JavaScript? It is, yeah. It's all done in it's all done in JavaScript. A very, very poor JavaScript as well. I will I will say now. Um I was very, very lazy while I was doing it. Um but yeah, it's it's all done in JavaScript. Uh you should accept most developers to have no clue and still growing hundred percent year, which is how they both only have one year experience. Yeah, I understand that. But then again, I, I guess this comes down to kind of how you um, how you structure your teams as well. This is another reason I think pair programming is really useful because you you get to share that knowledge very quickly with people. But um, yeah, I'm not going to go into into this because I've got out of dev now, so I don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> okay. Um... And this is this is looking pretty good. Uh, I don't know why those things down there didn't um, didn't open. I think it's probably because I need to set them up in the editor uh, to be proper bonuses somehow. Uh, but that's fine. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I think me and you, Kremers, have probably got quite similar. Um, similar uh the kind of outlooks on on development and, and kind of and stuff because it sounds like you've you've got a kind of similar um you've, you've had similar kind of uh career to me over the past couple of years you know working with uh managing teams of devs and and kind of having to deal with um yeah that balance really between um between you know code quality and maintainability and and and, and, me and meeting deadlines and unfortunately, yes, deadlines always take freaking priority. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know what made me say. I've never, ever used that phrase in that way. So um, it's, it's really weird. I don't know what made me say that. <laughs> you know. Um always hands on yeah i i like to be hands on as well i don't i don't i i like to know um and by hands on i mean hands on from a code point of view uh, i don't like micromanaging i think that's terrible but um it's captured for eternity damn it i should have played some music as i was saying it so it would have got taken away by dmca takedown um Okay, let's uh, let's think about power abilities now. So, um, 
does the player have a player speed? Because the first power up is actually uh, a player speed power up. Yeah, we do have player speed here. Okay. Uh, in here. Okay. Oh, but we don't know what power up it is that we've picked up. Okay, so we're going to need some more information. Actually, I probably, I think I might call it a night here, actually. Because um, I think everything else that I need to do, I need a little bit more. Like, I need to, I probably need to look at the script for the char pad to make sure that we can put um, bonus types in, um, which I don't have at the moment. Um, I need to look at the the character set to see how I can add the bullets in. So that's going to be something I can't quite do. Um, so, uh, consider streaming JavaScript coding. No, I, I can't, um, I, I can't bring myself. I, I, I wouldn't want to do that. It would just, I don't need Don't get me wrong. Right. I, I, JavaScript is always my go-to when I want to prototype something very quickly, just because I, I've used most of the frameworks for, for doing various things like React and Pixie and, uh, you know, backend stuff with Node. So I can pretty much do what I need. I can prototype anything I need to relatively quickly with JavaScript, but I still hate it. I still absolutely hate it. So, <laughs> oh God, I'm not going to live that down, am I? <laughs> okay. On that note, I think I am going to call it a night here. So I'm feeling fairly tired. Um, so let's go and find, we have to keep that quote alive. <laughs> oh God. Uh, who's heading that? So Hayes maintaining his lead. So Hayes is still 37,000 ahead, which is pretty good. So yeah, just a reminder on, uh, so on Saturday, we'll be giving this away. So it's all it's all built now. Um, I just need the only thing I need to do. I just need to file. I don't know if you can see that on there. Uh, so I've fit two buttons to it, uh, but they were slightly bigger than the hole. So I've had to file down ever so slightly on here. I'm going to do a bit more filing so that they uh, so that the gaps are, are similar on the top and bottom. Uh, and I need to set the joystick up uh, for this as well. Um, also, that doesn't seem to be stuck down. So I might have to make sure that that's actually stuck down um but yeah we'll be giving that away on saturday so make sure you save some points for that uh yeah retro coder tv is indeed on let's go and raid him then um okay cool so retro coder tv has been doing z80 on the zx spectrum next uh cool guy uh he's always happy to see us as well i think he likes the big raids so um let's click on that uh yeah cool so uh yeah we'll do we'll do the giveaway on saturday same rules as normal two and a half thousand points uh we'll start the giveaway at half past nine uh uk time the giveaway will be at midnight um you can buy three tickets and then one person will be chosen at random to win it um and then you've got five minutes to give me your uh give me a sign that you're there and you've you've claimed it and then we can um we can get that shipped out to you okay cool um thanks guys for coming along and i shall see you all on saturday take care